Hey everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can animate your Daz Genesis 3 character using iClone's intuitive motion tool. So we're going to explore a number of different tools here in combination and how you can use those in various scenarios. What we're going to be recreating is something similar to what you see on the screen right here. We have this beautiful Daz character just kind of moving about. Uh, she's going to begin talking to us Hello, here. and welcome to our animated presentation. Today we're looking forward to showing you something new and exciting. All right, so believe it or not, we combined a whole bunch of different motion tools to create this completely custom motion here. And I'm going to show you how to recreate that as we go on right now. So let's go ahead and I'm going to right, uh, select my character, right click her, and remove all the object animations. So now we no longer have any animation on our character. We're going to have to start from scratch. Now the first thing we're going to do is apply a simple motion, a uh, motion clip to our character from our content library. So go to the content tab over here. I've downloaded this Swam and, uh, Suave and Charming content pack from the content store here. And I'm going to go to Idle Around. And there is a stand turn motion here. You may recognize this as the first clip that we uh, had on our character. All right. So she moves around like that. Now, the reason I'm applying this clip first is because I wanted to demonstrate the collision shapes on your character. So these are collision shapes for hair and physics objects and stuff like that. So if you import in your Daz Genesis 3 character, they won't automatically come with these you'll have to customize them, all right? So take a look at what happens uh, if we play back. Our character's hair nicely flows around the shoulder, which is, uh, you know, basically what we want. Now, if we don't have collision shapes, let's go into the collision shape tool right here over in your uh, modify tab. And you can see with our character selected, we have a number of different collision shapes on the neck, the shoulder and upper arm and chest. All right, so what you wanna do is you can, you know, select these and you can modify them by pressing the R hotkey. You can scale them up and down if you want to scale them larger or smaller. I'm just going to control Z that. And you can move them around using the W hotkey um, according to your preference. But what you want to do is make sure that you have these because if we don't have them, let's turn collision off and let's play back and see the difference here. So now the hair will just go right through the shoulder, which in you know most cases, obviously, you don't want that in any case, I, I would imagine. I can't imagine a case where you'd, where you'd need that. Let's go ahead and keep the collision on there, and then you can see the result if we uh, play back. The hair will, you know, go nicely around the shoulder, which is exactly what we want in the end. All right, so make sure that you have your collision shapes on, and you can adjust the margin and everything like that if you want to increase the amount of distance between your collision shape and the hair or the, or the physics object or whatever. Um, but that's something you can uh, mess around with, and we have other tutorials that go into more detail on that. So let's go ahead and close that down right now. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply another clip to our character. So let's go ahead and uh, press F3 first to go into our timeline. Let's make sure we have object related track selected. So we can select our character here. Her name is Root Node, a very fancy romantic name. Anyways, let's go to the very last frame of this first clip here, which is right here. You can see this is our first motion clip in the motion track. And let's apply another clip uh, to our character. This time we're going to go to Sensual Cues and we're going to have one called Stand and Talk. Okay, so let's apply that to our character. And if we zoom out, you can see she, you know, leans towards the audience, you know, does her little uh, movement, sensual cue, I guess, whatever you want to call it, and uh, so on and so forth. It basically goes to the words, the, uh, to all the way to the end of our project here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to modify this. There's some stuff that we want to cut out. And the stuff that I want to cut out is at the beginning of it and kind of midway through. So let's go ahead and click and drag in our timeline here. I want to avoid this, you know, um, part where she leans forward like this and where she, you know, talks like this. Um, where the place I want to start is about right here, right before she brings up her hands like that. Okay, so right about here, I'm going to just go ahead and right click on that clip and we're going to break it break it in half, all right, and then just delete the first part of the clip. Then we can take the second part here, click and drag it um, to meet up with the first section here, the first clip, and we'll alt and scroll our mouse button to zoom in here, and you can see we have this uh, nice transition area here that'll transition from one clip to the other. If I play back, you can see it'll be a very fast transition in this case, right there, like zoom just like that. So what I want to do is maybe, you know, sp expand this out a little bit, and you can see it's still, it's better now, but you can still see her feet sliding just like this. So to avoid this kind of situation where the feet are sliding, because not all feet are going to be in the same position when you apply different clips, what you want to do is at the very beginning of the transition care area, double click in the transform track, 
and then go to the very first frame of the actual clip. And you want to make sure that the feet are in the same position, okay? And make sure you pay attention to which foot is planted on the ground. So in this case, the left foot is planted on the ground, and you can see it's sliding over right here. On this side, it's on the right side of the line, and then suddenly it's on the left. So right here, what we want to do is move her entire body back over to this side right here, okay? And then we should have, you know, fairly stationary positioning for the feet. All right, so just make sure you do that. Uh, one transform keyframe at the beginning of the transition area and one at the end. And then we have this, okay? So now she'll begin talking, uh, yada, yada, yada. And then she'll begin leaning forward again, which I don't want. Um, but anyways, what we're going to do here is we're going to overwrite that lean forward. We're going to overwrite it by masking out the motion clip. Or masking out the body with a motion clip using the motion puppet tool, okay? So right about here, as she begins her lean forward, as she brings her arms down like this, you know, try to get a neutral position most of the time. Something like this is, you know, fairly neutral. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to, um, actually I'm going to apply the motion, or uh, the audio file first, just so we have some timing for this. So first I'm going to go to frame, uh, the first frame of the clip right here. I'm going to go to motion tool and create script and audio file. And I have this audio file prepared that I'm just going to load Hello, up. And welcome to our animated presentation. Today we're looking forward to showing you something new and exciting. So she doesn't really look like something new and exciting when she's kind of shyly leaning back and forth here. So we're going to replace that with a gesture um, from our Motion Puppet tool, okay? So we're just going to keep it right here. And we're going to go to Motion Puppet. And there's a number of different, uh, you know, uh, profiles in here that you can mess around with. Uh, this talk one, for example. I'm going to use this male talk, even though it's a female character. It's it's quite well suited for this uh, situation. So if I press space, you, you can see she'll snap into this position. Something. And obviously we don't want that leg position to change too much like that. So what we want to do is we want to go to our mask tab right here. And we want to mask out the body of our character, um, including the chest and the hip right there. And then we have something like this. You something new and exciting. All right, so she maintains her foot position, although it's sliding around, we'll, we'll fix that later. All I want to do is keep that, you know, new and exciting gesture right there. So I'm going to go ahead and record, I'm press space. Show you something new and exciting. Okay, and we'll stop there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply an idle motion to our character. Um, so you can see it uh, ends the motion clip right there, or the puppet clip right there. And then I'm going to go into our idle profiles and just choose the sexy one right here. And she'll go into a nice sexy pose. And you can, you can decrease the exaggeration on that, you know, if her, if she's moving around too much, you can see like right here, you know, she'll really go to the extreme and maybe we'll decrease it to about, you know, 65 or something like that. So she's, you know, not leaning over too far. It still looks fairly natural though. Okay. So let's go ahead and keep that. Just press record and record a few seconds of her, you know, uh, looking around in her sexy pose. Don't worry right now that her arms are into her uh, body. We're going to mess around with that. Uh, we're going to fix that rather a little bit later on. Okay. But what we want to focus on right now is we want to focus on the foot sliding of our character. So let's go back to, uh, we can just move this over a little bit first. Let's go back to uh, a little earlier on our timeline here. Now let's take a look at the foot sliding that we, sh we saw a little bit earlier. Okay. So right here is nothing. But when our puppet clip starts, you can see that she'll begin to kind of slide over like that, which, you know, doesn't make a lot of sense. And that's because it's basically just maintaining the root, you know, the center of the body right there, uh, which doesn't make sense when you have leg movement. So what I'm going to do is you want to pay attention to which foot is planted here. Okay, so, for example, right now we have this foot planted, and now we have the left foot planted. Okay, so what I'm going to do is right when the left foot lands right about there, I'm going to right click on, uh, right -click on that clip and break it in half. And then for the first part of the clip, I'm going to right click and select align whole clip to the right leg because the right leg is the one that's planted. Okay. And then you can see as soon as we get to the second clip, the transition area, it'll slide over like that. So what we want to do to avoid that is right click on this clip and select align whole clip to the left leg. Okay. And then it'll move over like that. So now we have, we've avoided that situation where now she steps and plants her left foot. Okay. And then there's a certain area right here where she kind of sinks into the ground. Now, what we want to do here is uh, to avoid that sinking in the ground, we can right click here, break, and align this third clip here to the right leg again. Align whole clip to right leg. There we go. 
and then we won't have that sinking in the ground. But then we have this, you know, section right here. Well, you know, obviously we want to avoid that again. So we can just, you know, select this idle clip here, right click, align hole clip to the right leg, and boom, there we go. Okay. So now we have this. Okay, good enough. And we can, you know, increase that transition area if we want, you know, to avoid her popping into that uh, idle position. So now we have something like this. Okay, maybe even a little bit too fast. We can extend that a little bit further. There you go. Okay, looking good. Now, the last thing I want to do here is we're going to modify. You can see her chest is kind of moving around. She's not looking at the camera. So there's two things we want to do here. We want to have her look at the camera, but we also want to align her body so she's straight and not moving around like this. Now, we could do that with, you know, keyframe editing, but there's a really quick and easy way to do it. And I'll show you that right now. Let's go ahead first to this frame right here, and I'm going to use the Direct Puppet tool. This Direct Puppet tool is used for, you know, uh, puppeting body parts in real time. So if I select the chest, for example, use Primary Rotation, and I, I press Space, you can see I can rotate her body around like this. You know, it's useful for various scenarios, but in this case, all we want to do is maintain a locked position forward. So if I select her chest right here, and I press record and press space. To show you something new and exciting. And I don't move my mouse. You can notice that now she's just simply facing the camera. Now, pay attention to the clips on the bottom there as well. As soon as I finish this, as soon as I press space, it's going to overwrite all those clips as a single puppet clip. Okay, single direct puppet clip. So if you want to, you know, modify those further, you want to save your project before you get into this. Okay. We have this nice, you know, transition, uh, and now we have the chest facing straight forward. She doesn't do that shy kind of moving around. Let's play back and see really quick. You can see her arms kind of go a little bit quickly to her side, so we can extend that transition area. There you go, they're more natural. All right, cool. So she's facing the camera, but her head's not really looking at the camera. So let's go ahead to frame one here. And I'm going to have our character look at the camera. You can see if I go to the side here, and I go to my uh, Edit tab. And down here, there's a Look At uh, feature. And you can have a, your character look at the camera. So let's go look at camera, and you can see her following the camera. Kind of, and it, I always find this kind of creepy as uh, you're, you're moving the camera around. Your character is constantly staring at the camera. All right. So now we have this character looking at the camera. Let's play back and see what happens. So we have an issue there where she's looking at the camera, but because of her extreme head Hello. movement, it looks like it's, it's popping. It's basically conflicting with the look at feature. So what we want to do is at the beginning there where she's turning around, obviously we don't want her looking at the camera at that point. So we're going to go ahead and select set free. Okay. And we're going to let her do her thing, her little flippity doo dah, whatever it is. And then as she comes back, she starts her, you know, whatever, uh, monologue. We're going to go ahead and have her look at the camera at this point. So we're going to go ahead and select look at camera. And now she's looking at the camera again. Okay. So now the issue here is at the beginning, let's play back one more time. Notice that the hair kind of flips, flips around a little bit. Now the reason for that is that if you have too much head weight on your look at, so if I go over here to uh, the look at, you can see that it's mainly on the head side for the look at weight. If I change that to, you know, eyes, uh, more on the eye side, and we play back, we shouldn't have that popping of the head. So again, it's, it's a kind of a conflict, again, with the, uh, the look at Hello, constraint. And so keep, keep that in mind. You know, you may experience issues like that, and all you need to do is just adjust the look at weight ever so slightly towards the eye side, okay? So now we have basically everything taken care of. We have the look at and everything, but there's one final thing we want to take a look at, and that is, once we play back, you can see the hair falls nicely over her shoulders. She begins her Hello, and little welcome movement to there. Our animated presentation. Today we're looking forward to showing you something new and exciting. Take a look at where her arm goes. Oops, right through her body. Obviously we saw that earlier, so we need to go ahead and fix that. So let's go to the uh, first frame of this puppet clip here. Let's zoom in on our timeline here, and let's just... Uh, basically scrub along the timeline and see any any part where the uh, the hand is kind of going through the body like right there for example what we want to do is at this frame the very first frame I'm going to do a couple things here 
um, because for the duration of this puppet clip, I want the body, the shoulders to be a little bit higher. Okay, so I'm going to go to the first frame of this puppet clip. I'm going to go to my motion tab and use the edit motion layer tool here. And then I'm going to select my shoulders for my character. I'm going to move them up slightly just because they're a little bit saggy at the beginning there. I'll move those up slightly just like that. Okay, looking a little bit uh, better. And then um, I'm going to open up the motion uh, layer track first of all. And you can see that added a keyframe in the motion layer track. If I go twirl it down, you can see all the keyframes in the different body positions and everything like that. But generally, I just work with a dope sheet, which is this one right here. All right, so let's go ahead and right about here, you can see that, you know, maybe her shoulder needs to be a little bit further out from her body. Um, you know, we can do that at frame one if we want as well. Let's just, you know, take that out and uh, bring it a little bit further out just like that. Okay. And then, to show me then at this part over here, you'll see that, uh, you know, her hand goes into her kind of, kind of into her butt right there. Okay. So let's just go ahead and, uh, at this point here, I'm going to add another keyframe right before the hand enters the mesh. I'm going to double click in the motion layer track. And as it does, what I'm going to do is adjust the position right there. So we need to adjust this shoulder position to be, you know, a little bit further out. We can, you know, uh, let's just move it out this way, actually. Something like this. Okay, maybe a little bit further out like this. And take that um, forearm as well and move that out slightly. Maybe rotate it just like this. Okay, so you want to make sure it kind of remains natural looking. So, you know, something like this. Okay, and then she'll, you know, keep her position like that. And we can, you know, at this point here we can move it back to whatever position. It looks like a kind of a model pose anyways, but uh, okay. And then she'll, you know, we fix that uh, right arm right there. Now obviously you want to fix the left arm here as well. So as before her, uh, before she enters her uh, uh, hip cavity there, what we want to do is add a keyframe right before that. So uh, about right here. So we're going to double click, add a keyframe there. And basically this is the frame where she enters her hip cavity. Now you can select your keyframes and press tab or shift tab to uh, toggle between them. Shift tab goes backwards, tab goes forwards. And so I'm just going to keep it simple, uh, keep it at the same frame right here. And I'm going to take this uh, forearm here, bring it out a little bit, bring it up a little bit, and then we'll just rotate the hand slightly. Move it out just like that. Okay, we're not going to be too picky for this. And we'll just kind of keep it in that position right there. All right, so then, you know, might still go through the uh, body a little bit like that, but just need to, every time it does, just add a keyframe, ever so slight adjustment. And you know, here, if it's too far away, you can, you know, move it closer. Okay. And she's, you know, moving her body a lot way too much. It's kind of annoying, but uh, this is one of the more difficult fixes, you know, if you ever come across this. This one, maybe just bring a little bit forward as well. Um, and again, you know, hands on the hips are always a kind of a, a troublesome to deal with anyways. But uh, we'll go like here and bring that one up again. I'm not worrying about how many keyframes I'm adding here, but uh, okay. So, you know, obviously it's kind of troublesome to deal with that. But anyways, that's about it. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our final product here. I'm just going to go ahead and play back. She has her shoulder flip right there. Oh, I didn't see you there, and she begins talking to us. Hello, and welcome to our and... animated presentation. Today we're looking forward to showing you something new and exciting. All right, and then we no longer have her, you know, breaking through her body, and she still has that kind of sexy position. All right, so good enough. That's about it for this tutorial, guys. Um, I showed you the Motion Layer Editor tool, the Direct Puppet tool, the Motion Puppet tool, um, modifying and editing clips, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. I know it was a whirlwind of information there. We do have other tutorials that go into more detail on each individual tool. There's other stuff that I didn't cover, such as, you know, reach and mix moves and, uh, you know, device mocap, and we have other tutorials on that as well. You can always check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com if you have any more questions about animation, or check out our other videos on our Reillusion YouTube channel. Uh, so thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.